Okay, hey guys, uh, I'm gonna give a quick demo of the uh, network physics stuff that just went into network prediction. Uh, this was a really long time coming and I, and I apologize for the apologize for the major changes that kind of went in and, and just how long it took, but I think this was like the last really big set of stuff uh, that, that we had to do to, to make physics and like group reconciling working. So uh, hopefully pace of development will, will pick back up again and we'll, we'll start to see more rapid uh, iteration on this stuff. Uh, that said, there is like still stuff to do and there, there's bugs uh, that I'm still chasing down and there's still some missing features, I think, to make this like a complete thing. Uh, and I'll talk about that as, as we go into it. But let's just like, I just wanna show something cool. That's like the whole point of this. Uh, so yeah, you can see these are just like dumb old physics objects. There's no, uh, there's no like backing gameplay code driving them. They're just like, physics is just, you know, updating their position and I'm, I've got this like laser beam on my spaceship that is a network prediction simulation. Uh, and it's applying impulse to these actors when it when it when it traces against them, uh, and well, sometimes the balls go through the world. But that's not that's not network prediction. That's I think that's chaos. Um, so yeah, uh, this works out pretty well. Uh, you don't really see you don't really notice any corrections happening. Like even if I like spam it, like the the client works out. Things work out pretty well. I think on the client. Uh, I mean, this is like the simplest example. Like it's a box map with just spheres, uh, you know, a, a more chaotic like situation will probably not work as well, like straight out of the box. And I think I want to make more videos in the future, kind of like building those things out and then showing how you can tricks and stuff that we can do to make, make those types of issues less pronounced. But like I said, I just want to kind of show like the basic stuff working right now. Um, one thing I can, I can show you when, it, when a correction actually happens, what it looks like. Uh, so I can disable the gun on the server. This is what this is doing. So the client's going to still apply the impulse, but the server is not going to apply the impulse. And then when the when the client finds out that the server didn't apply the impulse, it's going to snap back. And it just looks just like you'd expect. I can kind of hold it, get that weird effect. But it always just snaps back to where the server is, but not immediately because it takes a round trip time. See, there's one of those insurers that I was talking about. I got to chase that down. I think I know what that one is, but uh, I haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet. Um, Okay, so before I go on to that, I'm, I'm gonna show one more example, but before I go on to that, I, sh I should point out that the um, the big caveat here is that I'm running I'm running in fixed tick mode. So the engine has to run in fixed tick mode for the physics to work in network prediction. The network prediction will do that automatically. If you look in project settings, network prediction, there's, there's some settings that I added and this checkbox here will make it so that uh, if you run physics, it will force the engine for you. Um, but keep that in mind that uh, you know, if you're evaluating using this for your game, like right now, that is the requirement. Um, and it doesn't have to be, I run it at 60. I wouldn't recommend really running it lower than 60 uh, for now, but uh, that will be up to you exactly how you want to, what frame rate you want to run it at. Um, but I, the, the important thing to, to point out here is that we are we are working to support the fixed time, the fixed physics time step uh, within the variable ticking engine, uh, which will make this more uh, broadly applicable, uh, I think, to, to a lot of people. Uh, but for right now, that's that's is the case. You have to you have to run the engine in fixed tick mode. Um, okay, so what I just showed you there was a uh, just sort of non gameplay driven physics working with the system. I'm going to show you this this example is it's less exciting, but uh, it's kind of cool because uh, I actually here's a here's a physics ball that I am controlling. I'll show you the code after this once we kind of just show what it can do. Um, but like yeah, I can just. It's not as exciting as a laser beam. I, and I wanted to spend more time making like an, an ability or something that it could work. And maybe I'll do that at a later point. As I mentioned, those do more do more videos. But um, yeah, so I can like move this ball around and I can have collisions and interactions with like other actors that I don't control because I'm forward predicting everything and everything's running in a fixed tick mode. Um, it was kind of weird. It kind of was like floating off the ground in a weird way. But uh, yeah, so that works pretty well. And I can, I mean, I'll try running this with two players and showing you how that looks. Uh, though that this might cause that uh, that check to happen again, we'll see. Yeah. So you see a little bit of popping. Yeah, there's that check. Let's see if I can just F5 it. Yeah, I don't know. But it, but it, I think it happens when they're both in focus. I gotta get to the bottom of that. A future video, I guess. But yeah, you can see like it. Ah. Okay, so that's that boy's got to be fixed soon. I'll make more videos later, I think, on, on the topic once I get that stuff sorted out. Um, 
But yeah, so it's, like I say, not, not, not a super exciting simulation itself, but the code that driving this is all super simple, and that's what I think is cool. So let me show you that real quick. Yeah. So this is in, uh, this is in mock, right? It's in mock physics simulation right now. And this is really the meat of it. Uh, and that's all it is. I can real quick show you the, let me make sure you guys can see this. I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, so there's the input command that you have to you have to define. I made this a blueprint type so that the blueprint code can fill it out. It's not a requirement. It was kind of my first time trying that. It actually worked out pretty well. Um, so you have your input command, which is just like your movement, whether you're pressing the jump button and what your like your movement input is. And then uh, I don't even have a sync state. I just have the aux state, which is doing your jump cooldown and uh, a force multiplier, which I'm not really using right now. But uh, that's the state in addition to the physics state. That's the network prediction state. And then the network prediction simulation tick function is this like really dirt simple thing. This comes with the cap. I'll talk about this stuff in a second, but um, you know, it's really simple. All it does is say, hey, get your movement input, your movement input vector, and then uh, turn it into a force, scale it by some, you know, scale it, and then uh, add, add the force to, to the physics actor, to your physics actor, um, based on you know what the movement input was. So movement input, force, add it. And then for the jump, it says like a jump is pressed and the jump is not on cooldown, uh, then apply a jump force. Just I have hard coded right here in a dumb old way, 100,000. Uh, it applies the jump force and it sets your, your jump cooldown. And so like, that's cool. Like that's all, that's all you have to write to like, to make that uh, basically what, what amounts to like a really simple vehicle. Like a vehicle is just a more complicated version of that. And so uh, and the networking and everything predictively is all, you know, taking care, care of it for you. Um, so yeah, I think that's what's, that's what's exciting about that to me. Um, I, I will say, so what this actually is doing, it's calling this like add force on, on, in the mock physics namespace, which is up here. There's some notes here to talk about this. This stuff probably will change the, I think we're, we're still trying to figure out exactly how we want, uh, you know, a situation like this, how we actually want to apply the force to the physics actor. Like we have the physics actor handle, but uh, to kind of do that properly, we kind of have to kind of to duplicate some code that was in the, in the physics, uh, in part of the physics uh, layer that's not really exposed in a way that I can use. So this stuff might change exactly how we apply the force and that sort of thing. But uh, the, the main point being is that this is pretty pretty darn simple, and I think that shows like the power of uh, of this stuff. So. Okay, I think that's that's probably going to be it then for the video here. Uh, thanks for watching. I, and I say I apologize for the long, the long stretch of no updates, and I hope that things pick up again soon. I think I think the big refactors are out of the way, and it's going to be about like nailing this stuff down now and getting it. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, getting it down, nailing it down, and, um, and then shipping something with it, and then it'll be uh, it's going to be awesome. Okay, thanks guys.